Steve Gun Barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. Week 11 is here. We're going to pick some games. How are you doing? You know, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to be real with you. Time change kicking my ass. Yeah. Yeah. Time change ki kicking my ass. I am super happy that like we get to, we get to spring our clocks forward in the spring and then that's it. We're done. Right. Am I right? We're done. We're done with this shit. Possibly. Possibly. I think. I think that think that's what's happening. We'll just permanently just be on daylight savings time all the time. And that's that's great. That's exactly what I want. All right. Week 11 is here, Jared. We're going to pick six games here. Uh, we pick seven games. But if you want to listen to our Hase Indiana picks, check out our Thursday episode for the Know Your Enemy Indiana edition. Let's go ahead and get started, Jared. Uh, we will start with the Big Ten here, where we have Penn State taking on Maryland. Um, Penn State in this game is a 10 and a half point favorite. I'll go, I'll go ahead and start here. And I I don't think Maryland's offense is any good anymore with um with baby Tua. Um, no longer taking the snaps there. So I, this is all Penn State here. So I'll take Penn State to cover. Through the uh, first one, two, three, four, five games of the season, mm -hmm. Maryland went four and one against the spread. Uh, over the past four games, they're on a four game losing streak against the spread. Interesting, especially as Kyle pointed out, um, with uh, without Baby Tua, they they've not been they've not been themselves. Um, mm -hmm. You can't be Maryland and lose your starting quarterback and 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 still have it. Um, it's yep. uh, the system's not set up for most teams to have a decent backup quarterback, especially uh, especially a Maryland. Um, so yeah, I'm going to uh I'm going to for sure pick Penn State to win and cover. I think this will be one of those games that maybe looks a little close at halftime. Maybe Penn State's you know winning by 10 points at halftime, but then just they they rip it wide open in the second half. I think that's I think it's going to be one of those type of games. So yeah, mm -hmm. give me Penn State to win and cover. Uh, what's the chat think? Zach Spikes, who you got in this game? Kyle, who's next? All right. While we're um, Spikes takes Penn State. All right. All right Zach might be here... asleep. He falls asleep <laughs> sometimes. All right. Next next game here is tenth ranked Alabama. Just gonna let you think about that one right there. Yeah. Tenth ranked Alabama, double yeah. digit ranked Alabama, <laughs> and Ole Miss, who's currently eleventh ranked. Uh three thirty kickoff, and Alabama is an eleven and a half point favorite. Now I'm I'm kind of torn about this game here because part of me thinks that Ole Miss will keep this close. But at the same time, anytime Alabama loses, that next team that they play is usually like, uh, this is not the week to play them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm going to go with the first. I'm going to go with the first here. I think, I think Ole Miss will keep it closer, but I think Alabama will still win the game. But I'll, I'll, I'll pick Ole Miss to cover. Yeah. Um, Ole Miss has been uh, somewhat atrocious against the spread this year. Um, only th three and five. Um, and you know, when they, when they lost to LSU, that was supposed to be a pick em game and they ended up losing by 25 points. Um, 
they only beat Texas A&M by three points last week, and Texas A&M's pretty, pretty bad. Um, I think I think Ole Miss has been a pretty fortunate team at times this year. Um, I I don't think they're nearly as good as eleventh, and I don't think they're nearly as good as that eight and one record indicates. So I'm going to take Bama to win, cover, and obliterate Ole Miss. As Kyle pointed out, you don't want to play Saban the week after a loss. That's mm-hmm. it's, it's not a good idea. Don't ne- never play Army, never play Navy, um, never play Bama the week after a loss. Yep. All right, next up here, we have uh, two of the top – Group of five teams here going at it. UCF and Tulane. Who had who had that? Who had that on the bingo card? <laughs> uh Tulane. How, how many how many group of five games have we picked during the sloop picks this season? I think we maybe picked the Cincinnati game at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's the only one. Maybe and then we're like only- uh, like Ohio State played some group of five. So we obviously like when Ohio State plays a group of five team, um, we, we pick those. Mm-hmm. But not many, not many. I don't I don't think I can go back in the weeks here. If I go picks. Um, oh, I can, but I'm I'm not going to because that's taken. Away it's, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Tulane is a two and a half point favorite, but I, I really, I think, I don't know. This is a, this is a toss up. This is a toss up one here, but I, I think UCF has the better offense here in, in this game here where I think, I think it's going to be a high scoring game. I'll, I'll pick the team. Uh, I'll pick the quarterback. I'll pick the quarterback. <laughs> so I'll, I'll take UCF to cover and win the game. Yeah. Um, the Kyle's right. This, this feels like a toss up. Um, as far as who's going to win feels very 50, 50 in my head. Um, you know, I've, I've been talking about like teams against the spread this year. Um, UCF is six and three Tulane is eight and one. So both teams have been fantastic against the spread um, this year. Um, I went in doubt, went in doubt, pick the underdog. This is a 50, 50 game. So why not take two and a half points? If two and a half points are offered to me, give me two lane. Yep. Oh, Kyle, have we been doing sun cards picks? Oh shoot! I'm sorry, sir. Card. I am totally so blanked. sorry. We totally blanked. Holy crap! Uh, Spike right. stakes UCF. Here. Yeah. All right. Let me go back here. So, for the Maryland and Penn State game, where Penn State's a ten and a half point favorite, uh, Sun Card says, "I'm picking Penn State because they will see blood and attack. They perform well against lesser opponents." For the Bama and Ole Miss game where Bama is an 11 and a half point favorite. Uh, he says, Bama remembers who they are and wins this one by 21. Remember, it just means more. I think 21 is a better spread for that game. All right. And then the other one for the UCF and Tulane game that we just did. Uh, I couldn't tell you anything about these two teams. Imagine Fair. the food is better in New Orleans than Orlando. For Fair. that reason, give me two lane. <laughs> you know, I think Slime Card's nailing these. <laughs> All right. Going to the next one here. Washington and Oregon. Uh, got a Pac-12, not an after dark game, though, but uh, 7 o'clock kickoff here. And Oregon, the Ducks, is a 12 and a half point favorite. Uh, I, I, I feel that the ducks is really having is really trying to make a statement here they've they've been playing tremendous these past few games as as they should for the teams that they've played and they've had a big win against UCLA recently 
the spread here favors Oregon. They've won their, or they've beaten the spread the last four games here. And I'll say this is the fifth one. I think Oregon will cover that 12 and a half points. It's a big number. It's a big number. Um, it's it's weird just because Oregon has looked so good this year in like all but two games. And yeah, against the spread this year, they're seven and two. That that math makes sense. Um, yeah, they they totally shit the bed against Georgia, which is a thing that no one can stop talking about, despite the fact that it, it happened in week one and, and for good reason. Um, they had a, they had a pretty bad showing against Washington state. They still win that game, but every other win, Kyle, every other win has been by double digits has been by more than two scores. Uh, their quote unquote worst win is UCLA by 15. That's their outside of the Washington state game, their, their least decisive win 15 points against UCLA. So it's real easy to look at that 12 and a half and say, that's a big number against a ranked team. And that's, that's kind of what Oregon's been doing this year. Yep. Again, right. aside from two games. So yeah, I agree with Kyle. Give me Oregon. All right, let's see what some card says. Uh, Oregon is on a warpath and will show up big this week. Short and sweet from from some card. <laughs> All right, uh, next up here. Uh, speaking of high scoring games here, uh, North Carolina and Wake Forest. <laughs> whatever the whatever the uh, over under is in this game, Jared, pick the over. <laughs> you think so? I think, yeah. Uh, I'm. I, I don't know what it is, but it it it's going to be a high. It's going to be a high scoring game here. Uh, let's see. Seventy seven points. There you go. Seventy seven. That's a that's a hefty number. By the way, Spike took Oregon. He's just he's in the chat letting us know. <laughs> All right, um, uh, North Carolina. Or, I'm sorry. Um, wait. Yeah, Wake Forest is a three and a half point favorite to end this game. Uh, UNC only having to make the hour, hour and a half drive over to Wake Forest here to play this game. So plenty of uh, Carolina. What, 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 road, yeah. what road would you take to, to get there, Kyle? Uh, 40. Thank you. <laughs> 40 <laughs> and then and then some other, other roads, but. Either way, whatever. Listen, uh, I thought it was funny. That's all I got. That's all I got. Uh, Wake Forest, three and a half point favorite in this game. That, that's interesting. Wake Forest, six and three. North Carolina, eight and one. Uh, I My gut feeling is that I think, I think the better offense that's been playing is going to will win this game here and that and that's UNC but man this I mean we've seen it with Wake Forest they can they can score some points these past couple of years and I know they've had some they've had some disappointing ones like their last two games where they uh lost to NC State they lost to Louisville but they have also looked pretty good against uh, Clemson early, earlier in the year too. But I don't know. I, I think the trend is with Wake Forest is what we're we've seen the past couple of weeks here. So I'll take I'll take UNC to to cover and win the game. It, yeah, it's hard because among among the many things like the reoccurring themes that you and I bring up during collegiate chaos on Tuesdays here on the uh, Buckeye Sleepcast. Um, during collegiate chaos is like North Carolina, like continues to be one of the worst ranked one loss teams. And why? Cause they've literally beaten nobody. They've literally mm -hmm. beaten nobody. Um, Kyle, is it fair to say that this is their toughest game of the year so far? 
Um, I mean, NC State would. Oh, oh, for UNC. I'm sorry. Yeah, for UNC. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Since since they're uh, lost to Notre Dame. Well, I was I, I was yeah I was about to say I should have said they're right. Yeah, I because they lost to Notre Dame. So that that obviously in my mind didn't count. But you, you, I think everyone gets what I was trying to say there. Um, and by the way, that was September Notre Dame. September Notre Dame wasn't very good. November Notre Dame would absolutely slaughter September so, Notre Dame. Uh, but regardless, uh, back on track here. Wake Forest, uh, pretty, you know, the somewhat better against the spread this year. Six and three versus four, four and one. Um my the problem here is that I really, really, really want to take Wake. But yeah. <laughs> but all signs are pointing towards UNC for me. Um, I do think Wake wins this game, but do I am I confident in that? Not really. I think they have a slightly better than 50-50 chance. Does three and a half points? move me from that when I think it's like maybe slightly better than 50 50 mm -hmm. or do I take the three and a half points and I and I think the number is like this close I think if it was two and a half I'd eat the points and take Wake Forest but three and a half I think I'm gonna go with UNC here what? unless I change my mind <laughs> You locking it in? You locking it in? Yes. North Carolina. All right. And some card, a homie some card says he takes wake. Their QB will find a way. I both both quarterbacks. This is a good quarterback game. This is a really yeah. good quarterback game. It, Both of these probably, quarterbacks, Maine and Hartman, have been putting up insane numbers this year. This, this is probably one of the best quarterback duel games of the year. Yeah, um, you could certainly put uh, Alabama versus Tennessee into that conversation. Mm -hmm. That's why I said one of. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. I was just. <laughs> I wasn't disagreeing with you. I was just adding, adding it like the first one that popped into my head when you said that. But no, I, I think this is a fantastic quarterback game. Or, you know, it's, UN, it's UNC and Wake. Is it a fantastic point guard game? Kyle, who wins this? Who wins this game if they're only allowed to put uh, five players on the field and they shrink the field and they make them shoot the ball, which is now round and orange? versus a, into into a hoop no no jared who wins no jared no this is this is uh <laughs> this is uh football not basketball i i understand that that's why it's a hypothetical such it's a totally hypothetical question well then, well, then it, it's unc hands down but please note that i asked if these players <sighs> moving on jared <laughs> <laughs> TCU in Texas is our sixth game here. Just in time, Austin. Look at that. Go Horned Frogs. How does this. he do that every time? <laughs> How does he show up right before we talk about TCU? TCU. And, well, Spikes was Spikes was telling him the games we were picking. Not that he was doing it on purpose, but. Yeah, yeah. 100% right. always by accident. T I believe TCU. him. TCU. TCU number four, the last spot in the playoffs for this last um, this week's rankings, heading on over to Austin, Texas, where Texas is a seven and a half point favorite. Yes, Texas at home, a seven and a half point favorite over uh, Austin's favorite Horn Frog team. I'm really glad I don't have my mouse in the Discord right now, so that 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 awful GIF isn't animating. <laughs> it's it's seriously gross. Uh, you got in this one, Jerry. You making me pick first this time? Yeah. Okay. Um, both of these teams have been okay. I'll I'll, I'll let that one animate. Both of these teams have been um, impeccable against the spread this year. 
Uh, TCU seven one and one, Texas six and three. Pretty good numbers, uh, especially mm-hmm. for TCU. Um, I am just incredibly worried that TCU flies by the seat of their pants all year. Like I, I feel like they're winning a lot of games very close that they should be dominating. I feel like they let teams stick around. Um, I feel like they aren't winning games dominantly. And I could say, and now that they're playing a team as good, it's Texas. Yada, yada, yada. But it's not like they've been playing cupcakes all year. They beat Oklahoma State, who was at least at the time highly ranked. They beat Oklahoma, who was at least at the time highly ranked. They beat Kansas, who I think was ranked at the time. They defeated Kansas State, who was, thank you, number one TCU apologist, Austin, for saying that, yes, they were. Um, they defeated Kansas State, who was, at the time, pretty highly ranked. At the time. I said was. Uh, <laughs> I think it was implied. Um They've won four at the time ranked on ranked games. Yes. Now you sound like an SEC person now. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, at the time, at the time, Arkansas was a top 10 team. God, Arkansas is terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but honestly, let me say this. There's a big difference bet- between saying at the time for an October game versus a September game. And again, like in November, it's, it's even more valid. So Mm -hmm. a lot of these games happened in October is my point. Um, I never, never, never tell me at the time if the game happened in September, October, maybe November. Sure. Who do you got, Jared? Who do you got in this one? It's just, a lot of points, I think. I think I think it's just a lot of points. Um, Don't you do it, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like this is like seven and a half versus six and a half. I do think Texas wins this game. I'm sorry, Austin. Um, but I am struggling with the number. I think it's a I think it's a pretty good number, um, but I'm going to pick TCU. I I think I think the number I really think the number should be more like five and a half. I think five and a half should be the number here. So I'm going to take TCU at, at, at seven plus seven and a half. Difference maker in this game is the is the quarterback transfer when yours here? I think if he I think if he has a really good game like he had against uh, against Oklahoma State here, I, I know that Texas lost against Oklahoma State, but if they if he plays as well as he did there and throw up two three touchdowns in this game here, I I think Texas may may win this game here. So, um, yeah, this, this is a big, um, just upset alert for TCU. (laughs) He is, (laughs) he's going to go in on you if you do it. He's even finding the ones with your name in it. It's pretty great. Yes, he is. He is. So Kyle, have you made the pick yet? (laughs) No, I haven't, but that, that one has my name in it, but Jared. Yeah. TCU has the better offense. And I, I think they'll, they'll they'll find a way to pull it through. And I think they will. They'll come up with the. Um, with the win down in Austin. So I will take TCU in the points. What does our homie Sun card say? All right, let me let me see here. He says. Uh. Sun card is all Texas. He says, I am the Ewers hype train. So go get him, Austin. <laughs> go get him. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, I feel like did we get? Yeah, we 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 did read his UNC Wake one as well. Correct. Uh, we did. Yeah. Yep. I, I maybe you should try. It might be a tarot card, Austin. Maybe maybe you should try. All right. We do have a question in our um, Ask Sloopcast mailbag here uh, from Austin, who's in here in the chat. Hi, Austin. Uh, he asks, do you think we see a lot of man free against Michigan due to their run game? And if so, do we see a lot of that these next two games in preparation for that? That's a good question, because there's like. The preparation probably more comes in practice, if that makes sense. Um, because how much do you want to show Michigan that you're working on it? You know what I mean? Do you want to put that on game film? I think would be my, I think, I think Jared explain what man free is for the casuals. I don't feel like it. <laughs> I, I don't want to, they have Google. <laughs> They they have Google, they can do it themselves, uh, and and like if you look it up on Google, they'll have like pictures and diagrams and shit for you. Like that's it's too hard. That's too hard. I mean, I don't give a damn. I know what it is. That's that's fine. And if people want to Google man free defense, then they should do that. The the people, it is a man free defense. If you Google it, they'll have diagrams as opposed to me sitting here trying to explain it and doing a terrible job and repeating myself and stuttering and, and it's, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared, that is. That is our uh, sloop picks. That is our all the questions that we have here. You got anything else? Um, oh, oh, yeah, no, we have we to do have. We do have one more thing, Jared. We have to pick our chaos. We do. Let's let me pull let me pull up the uh the schedule real quick here. So let's see here. We got ranked teams versus unranked teams. So the first one here is uh this Friday, USC and Colorado. Maybe. No. Nah. Tennessee and Missouri. Yeah. LSU and Arkansas. No. No. All right, Jared. Notre Dame and Navy. No, tempting, but no. All right. Uh, this one may be more tempting. Illinois and Purdue. Boiler up? Boiler up, maybe? Boiler up? <laughs> right, uh, I, I'll one. put that, I'm putting that one on the maybe list. All right. Kentucky and Vanderbilt. I'm going to move a little bit. I'll move a little bit quicker here instead of uh, <laughs> uh, Michigan and Nebraska. Tempting. Uh, <laughs> uh, tempting. Clemson, and, <laughs> Clemson and Louisville. Penn State and Maryland. NC State and Boston College. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Georgia and Mississippi State. Pass. Kansas State and Baylor. Maybe put that one on the maybe pile. Put that one on the maybe pile. Right. Um, Florida State and Syracuse, Stanford, Utah, and Arizona and UCLA. All right. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to find and value. U and UNC and UNC and Wake Forest. I think UNC Wake Forest might be the best value pick. Um, because like I think. Louisville Clemson, I think, is interesting. Um, I think we've seen Louisville look pretty good over the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, granted, you know, like they they demolished Wake Forest. Um, it's the ACC. Who cares? Me, because I'm trying to win points here. And you know that would be you know Clemson currently ranked tenth. That's a pretty decent payday. Uh, as far yeah, as mean, points goes, I mean, look at look at their wins. They have a win over UCF, who's who's ranked. They uh, get Jared Leto the hell out of my they, chat. 
they they have that um jared mentioned that big win um against wake forest a few weeks ago also have a win against Pitt, and yeah it's it's not a terrible louisville team but yeah that, that, that might be that might be a good pick there perhaps perhaps i think it's probably the best value pick i don't I don't necessarily think it's the most likely um, Syracuse, Florida State would be interesting if Florida State wasn't ranked 23rd. Like that's not enough points to be tempting. Um, Wake, UNC, as you said, UNC's ranked 15th. That's an OK point day. I think Baylor has a very, very good chance against Kansas State, but Kansas State's only 19th. That's not a huge payday. Um okay. I think the better value pick would be Louisville over Clemson. But I think I'm going to take Wake Forest over UNC only because I feel like it's it's more likely. I feel like that's a safer, lower risk take. So I'm going to take Wake Forest over UNC. Okay. I... I'm, going, I'm going all out, Jared, and I genuinely believe this. Are you going are, are you ready for it? Are you going to say Nebraska? Do it taking the bulldogs the bulldogs over the bulldogs oh <laughs> you you crazy bastard chaos ensues it'd be fun i i don't believe you i do not believe you i i i i have no faith that the bulldogs will beat the bulldogs but hey i won't stop me from celebrating if it happens in my pick here jared because he is still the, going to be, according to his head coach, he's still going to be the uh, starting quarterback for his team. I'm going to pick the Cardinals. I'll pick the Cardinals for my chaos. Yeah, I mean, that's a... No, not NFL. Stop it. Uh, yeah, I think I think that might be the better value pick. You, you, it's a little more risk, a little more risk, and a little more reward for sure. Um, but I'll I'll stick with my safer pick. All right. Austin goes all out, choosing Mississippi State over Georgia. Um, Spikes, do you have a chaos pick that you'd like to throw out there? No is an acceptable answer. Um, if if you don't. Uh, that that is totally fair. Um, I would basically win the season. Um, I have a pretty big one. Um, who did I? I I had a pretty. Didn't didn't I call? Who did I get? I want to say like it was last week or the week before. I took Notre Dame last week too. I'm not keeping track of your points though. But yes, I took Notre Dame to beat Clemson. That's almost as many points. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not keeping track. Of, I'm I'm not even keeping track of my own points. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back through all of the uh, all of the sloop pick episodes and and calculate Kyle's and I points because we're not doing a good job keeping track. <laughs> no, we're not. We'll do better uh, next time. Yeah, we'll actually have like a spreadsheet or something next time, and I'll put Kyle in charge of it because he he's better at the spreadsheets than I am, which is to say he's willing to do them, <laughs> and I'm not. Uh, uh, was it was it LSU over Ole Miss? LSU over Ole Miss. Yeah, LSU was unranked versus um in beating Ole Miss. Did that one of us pick that? No, I, I, I got I got Notre Dame. I picked Notre Dame. I think one of us did pick that. It might have been me. But I, I I I picked Notre Dame to upset number four Clemson last week. That was a huge yeah. get. All right. But again, All we'll right, have to go back. Luckily, we record these so we can go back and, and figure it out. Yeah. All right. That's it, Jared. That's all we have for today's episode. All right. Um that that is in fact it. Uh, I want to encourage everyone uh, to visit the sloopcast.com. It has a link to all of our other links. It's a link tree page. It's actually a campsite page, but it's the same thing. Get over it. Um, 
T-shirt stores. Uh, Christmas is coming. Aha. Aha. Christmas is coming. Um, you can go to the sloopcast.com and you can go there uh, and find links to our T-shirt stores or you can go straight to the T-shirt stores. Um, the one that's actually Sloopcast merch is at merch.thesloopcast.com and the one that is um, just more like generally like yay Ohio sort of stuff uh, you can find at 7071.thesloopcast.com. Slay my name, slay my name. If you're my age, it's impossible not to want to sing that. If you're my age. Um, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's all the plugs I feel like doing. Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. And that's it. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? We are 10 weeks into the season and the EFF has come out with their highest graded linebackers this season. Uh-oh. Or do, do we need to get some apology forms printed out for Austin, yeah. among others? Guess who's in the top five? Say it. Tommy Pickle <laughs> Eichenberg. <laughs> he is. You owe him an apology, the- Austin. According to the PFF here, Jared, he is ranked the second highest graded linebacker. Wow. In the country. So all those times, all those times that I said, actually, he's pretty good. And it's the defense. That's the problem. And everyone called me an apologist. It's amazing how often I get called an Ohio state apologist only to be proven right later. Because I'm not dependent upon stats to make my decisions and to to inform my observations. Iowa has two linebackers in the top five. <laughs> Once again, not right now he isn't. When if you compare Junior Eichenberg to Junior CJ Hicks, maybe. But right now, no, he isn't. Um And by the way, speaking of things I was right about, Iowa has amazing linebackers. And the fact that Ohio State struggled against Iowa was expected. Offensively struggled against Iowa. The defense was just fine. Hopefully Eichenberg goes to the NFL. So you're. You're just a hater. And I think at this point, you're just doing it for the bit. And even you realize you are wrong at this point. I, I I didn't need that. I didn't need that, <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> all right, that's it, Jared. That's all I got. All right. Uh, that's it. That's. No, just no, just no. All right. I, you, you need to acknowledge that you're a hater, Austin. He's just finding gifts with your name in it at this point. All right, that's it. That's the end of the show. Tonight's ending music is The Dopamines from the Cincinnati area. They're a punk band. They're a lot of fun. They're fantastic. You should check them out. And in fact, you're going to check them out. If you're listening to You're Wrong, You're Wrong, Austin. Uh, Play their song Sigma. Okay. Uh, We'll play their song Sigma tonight. Awesome. Which song do you want me to play on the Thursday episode? I don't know why I'm rewarding you because of how wrong you are about Tommy Eichenberg. And at this point, you even. They don't. Oh, God damn it. You should know who they are. I totally just fell for that. (sighs) This is this will be a dopamine song. I don't know which song it'll be. It's going to be a dopamine (laughs) song. And then he left. And then he left. He got his revenge. I pointed out how wrong he was, and then he got his revenge on me is what happened. And he needs to man up and realize how wrong he is about Tommy Eichenberg. So with all that being said, tonight's ending music will be the dopamines. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, 
with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is The Dopamines.